Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. I want to talk about a few of our favorite things. And what do I mean by that? Well, these are pieces of software that you can use, or I sometimes use, for doing various tasks. So I created a list of things that we use from time to time. Sometimes, some things we use on a daily basis. Some things, sometimes we use them just for diagnostic purposes. And I'm going to chronicle them now. And I'll also put links in the video description to them. They're all free products, at least free for personal use. Some of them may require a fee uh, be paid if you're going to use them for commercial use. Now, the first one I have up here behind me, it's called MemTest86. So if your system is blue screening or rebooting or crashing in general, before you do anything else, the best thing to do is to test your memory. And so that tool is behind me here. I'm going to tighten up on this. Now this tool can be put onto a flash drive. Um, you just go to their website. It's like memtest86.org or something like that. Again, I'll put the link in the video description. They give you a tool that allows you to create a um, flash drive, which you can boot to and then run this test. And you'll see here we're testing DDR4 3600 memory, so it allows you to see, first of all, is my memory running at the correct speed? And then it will do a whole bunch of different tests. And you can see right now we're doing the hammer test. Now this is 64 gigs of RAM, and the more RAM you test and the slower that it is, the longer it will take. This memory is going to end up taking about two hours. We're on an hour and 50 minutes to make one pass. Until this little pass number changes to two of four, we haven't completed what they call a pass. And a pass means a set of predefined tests that are going to be run on the memory. Once this changes to two, I stop the test because for me, one pass complete with no issues is sufficient. And any errors will show up down here, usually in red, but they'll, they'll show up down here uh, below in a list. If you have any errors at all, that's a problem. This test should complete with no errors. If you have errors, the easiest thing to do is to first reseat the memory. If that doesn't work, then test each stick of RAM one at a time until you find the offending RAM. Also check your motherboard manual, make sure you have the memory in the right slots. Make sure if you're using dual channel that the two sticks of RAM are identical. Um, all kinds of things like that. So this is called again MemTest86 and we do, this is the first thing we do after we build a computer. We run this test to make sure that the memory is good. And it's also the first thing we do if we get a computer in where someone says that it's having a problem. So there's MemTest86. One more thing while we're, talk, while we're talking about MemTest86. You'll, you, this will not, your computer will not boot to this flash drive generally unless you tell it to. So you have to hit the, the hotkey associated with uh, your motherboard and what brings up the boot menu so you can change which device it boots to. And I can go ahead and tell you that on, I'm looking at my cheat sheet, Asus boards, that's F8. See, when you first turn the computer on, just start hitting F8 to bring the boot menu up. ASRock, Gigabyte, and MSI are all F11. So ASUS is the one weird one with F8. All the other main board manufacturers are F11 to bring up the boot menu. So we're back. We're looking at another one of my favorite things, and that is called Ninite. This is free for personal use. I'm not sure if it's free for commercial use. Um, but of course you'd be using it personally. So if you've just reloaded your Windows and there's a lot of things you, you like to install like Chrome and 7-Zip and things like that, you can get all that done in one step as opposed to multiple steps. So let's take a look at Ninite for a second. So we're at the Ninite page here and there's a list of all kinds of common software that people use. I like Chrome, 7-Zip, and I also like to have Team Viewer, and I usually go ahead and install uh, Air and Silverlight, but you can also install things like VLC, which is a good video player, um, iTunes, is that still around? I guess it is. 
Um, there's all kinds of different pieces of software on here. A lot of people uh, like GIMP here. If it's for it's an image editor that's open source. Um, Dropbox, which I use from time to time. Um, there's all kinds of things. Sugar Sync, which um, is for backing things up. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you, you check off all the boxes for the things that you want, which I think I've done here. And you say, get your Ninite. And it downloads a little program and you run it. And it will go ahead and install all those things. So what I requested it do was install Chrome, Air, Silverlight, 7-Zip, and TeamViewer. And so it will go through quite quickly, one right after the other, and install all of those pieces of software, one right after the other. And, you know, that's a really short list of things that I installed. You can install, you know, well, basically everything on that page if you want to. I don't necessarily recommend doing that. But, you know, you pick the things that you use click a button and they're installed in a very short amount of time and they even put a little shortcut on the desktop. I already have my Chrome over here. I'm going to drag it down to my taskbar. So there is Ninite, N-I-N-I-T-E, Ninite.com uh, and I'll put a link of course in the video description. So one of the things I just you just saw me install was um, TeamViewer. We install TeamViewer on all our new builds because we have a professional TeamViewer license. And that allows us to remote, remote into customers' machines and help them. And the good thing about TeamViewer is it gives you a unique, it generates a unique password every time you reboot your computer. So if you let us remote into your computer or let someone else remote into your computer, um, the next time you reboot your machine, the password changes and they can't get back in. So let's take a quick peek at TeamViewer. So um, there's just a TeamViewer shortcut on the desktop. I'm gonna launch that. And what it gives you is what's called your ID. It's just a unique identifier. And this does not typically change. And then the password, which does change. And so if you're talking to your friend or you're talking to us, We'll ask you, what's your ID? You'll read that off. Then we'll say, what's your password? You'll read that off. And then we're able to connect. Now, if you want to help a friend, they would, you would type their partner ID in right here. Their partner ID is the same thing as their ID or your ID on their end. So you would type in, you know, 15689821. Eight five four, and then you'd hit connect and then it would ask you for the password and you would type that in again this is the person on the other end that's going to help you this is what they would be doing and then once you're connected you can um, move the mouse around and open and close things but if you're being remoted in too by someone and you move the mouse you immediately get control back so um, the good thing is they, that if you want to take control back, you can. Um, so that's TeamViewer. Uh, it's free, I believe, for personal use. We have a professional license that we pay for. But again, for personal use, it is free to my understanding. Go and review, of course, the license agreement before you start using it. But um, last time I checked, it was free for personal use. So another free program that I like is the Intel, I always call it the driver update utility, but the official name for it is the Intel driver and support assistant. So what is that? The Intel driver and support assistant, which I'm going to install now, excuse the cam poor camera working, is um, it allows you to update any Intel drivers you have on your system. Now, um, if you have largely an AMD system with nothing Intel in it, there's no point in installing this. But this particular system um, is an Intel motherboard with Intel Bluetooth, Intel Wi-Fi, um, and then there's also the NVMe driver, which sometimes needs to be updated. That's for the SSD. So. It'll put a little icon down here in your system tray next to the time, and you can launch that anytime you want. I'm gonna tell it to open it in Chrome. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna see if I have any Intel 
hardware on my system and if any of those drivers need to be updated. You can see here the Bluetooth driver and the Windows 10 driver are both not as current as they could be. Now Windows Update installed the latest drivers that it had available to itself, but there's a time lapse between when new drivers come out and when they make it into Windows Update. So if you want the latest ones, you can use this driver and support utility or driver and support assistant and update any of your Intel drivers. I'm going to say download all, so it'll download them. Then I'm going to say install all and it will install the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi driver and I just have to basically go through and hit next, 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 next. So there is the Intel driver and support assistant which we find to be very helpful. And if new drivers come out, you'll get notified down in your system tray. The little icon will, will change, I think, from green to kind of an orange color, letting you know that there's something new. And by the way, at the end here, for whatever reason, it always seems to say install failed. And if you uh, rerun the tool, you'll see that the install actually didn't fail, that it was successful. So I'll, we're deep this deep into it. I'll go ahead and let this finish and show you what I'm talking about. So you see here it says install failed. I'm going to go down to the system tray, rerun the tool, and it's going to say that the drivers are actually updated in the end. See, all your Intel drivers are up to date. Another piece of software that I really like and use often is the Heaven Benchmark, and it's been around for a really long time. But it's based on DirectX 11 and does do a very good do job of, of testing your graphics card. So what the Heaven Benchmark is, is it's meant to benchmark your graphics card. You can get a performance uh, score at the end if you want. But the way we use it and the way most people use it actually is either for burn-in testing your graphics card or just making sure your graphics card is good to begin with. So let's, let's take a look at the Heaven Benchmark now. Um, so the Heaven Benchmark, uh, I believe, as far as I know, is free. And when I launch it, since most of the cards we're doing are high-end cards, I change the quality to Ultra, the tessellation to Extreme, anti-aliasing to X8. Um, and then I don't mess with anything. We don't do anything with multi-monitor or 3D. Leave the resolution set to System. And then you just run it. And so what this does is it will max out your graphics card and try to draw this uh, scene that you're going to see. It's kind of mesmerizing, actually. People, when they walk past this, typically stop and just stare at it with their mouths open. I, I'm not sure what it is about it. But um, you can see here we're getting about 100 frames per second. We're running an RTX 2070 Super. Or maybe you can't see. It'll show your graphics um, speed and your memory speed as well as your temperature. Right now our temperature is 50 degrees. Typically um, graphics cards top out at 83 degrees and almost every graphics card after running this for more than about 10 minutes is going to get up very close to 83 degrees. Now what you'd like to see is your graphics card stay in the upper 70s, 78-ish, something like that. Um, that means the cooling system on it is doing a really good job, but there are a fair number of graphics cards out there that will get all the way up to 83 degrees and then throttle slightly to not go above 83 degrees. We're up to 65 degrees now. Now, if you had a defective graphics card, what you, would, you, might, you might see here is artifacts, little weird symbols and like plus signs and at signs or... or lots of dots all over the screen, purple or, or uh, yellow dots all over the place. You know, things just wouldn't look right if you had a graphics card failing. Or um, if you had some other problem, maybe this thing quits to the desktop, or maybe it blue screens in the middle of running this. So if you're able to run this Heaven Benchmark for about 30 minutes with no issues, you can feel pretty confident that at the very least there's nothing wrong with your graphics card. Um, and so we use this as a part of our burn-in procedure um, to make sure the graphics card's good to go. So there's the Heaven Benchmark. Hey, so uh, we're getting close to the end here, but I wanted to mention a couple of other programs that we like for email. And I'm not showing you this because I don't want to show you my email. 
Um, but for email, we recommend Thunderbird. At least that's what I use. So for a good free open source um, email program, I recommend Thunderbird. Um, it used to be put out by Mozilla, but I think it's now they kind of dropped it and it was taken over by the open source community. So very good email program, Thunderbird. Um, another program that we like a lot is 7-Zip. It's an open source uh, compression as well as unzipping program. Windows has its own built-in you know, extractor program, but 7-Zip is much more powerful and uh, allows you more control. You can select a whole range of um, zip files and you can choose to extract them all to that same folder or extract them into individual folders. And that's how I use that particular program uh, more than any other way. It has a lot more features than that, but that's what I mainly use. One more program I'll mention is uh, called VLC or Video Land Player. Um, but it's again, if you just Google VLC, Victor Lima Charlie, it's a very good video uh, player, plays all kinds of different formats um, and does a really good job. It's much better than, you know, Windows Media Player or whatever comes with Windows today. I always use a third party and uh, VLC is the one of my choice. So um, there you go. There's a list of some of my favorite things.